Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another part of Game Talk. I'm joined here uh, once again with Hunter, and we're going to talk about the uh, the worst Bioshock game. Goodness, that's with the a... best DLC. Uh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, out of the three, it is the worst. Okay, yeah, we can we can put it that way if you if you want to. I mean, we we won't talk about the well. Yeah, everything that was added in with the game though was awesome. Like I loved the multiplayer. Absolutely loved the multiplayer. Okay, the multiplayer was awesome. Cuz it it was I definitely I forgot that it existed. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's definitely something that was different that it, you know, it was different than your at least at that time it was different than your normal like just Call of Duty shoot 'em up multiplayer like what you'd expect because you and yet it still had the very basic uh, shoot shoot premise like it was just a TDM see but because you could use the plasmids and things it like yeah it was awesome and, and I will I will totally admit and I, I feel bad but I was young when I played it. Um, but there were so many when we figured them out there were so many places where you could like glitch out of the maps and um again i was young and uh you there was like a capture the sister or something and you would just like you'd have to hold the little sister for like so long and so we would um this was later after playing it for like a year uh we would grab her and then we would get out of the map and then make it so that our team like won no matter what and looking back at it like now i i know that it was annoying but i I was pretty young when we did all that so i I claim youth (laughs) because we're all assholes when we're young (laughs) that is very true i really wish that uh the remaster would have brought the multiplayer into because at the time I was playing that game with a severe, severe lag. I didn't have a good internet connection, but I'd still, I'd still play it because it was, it was just that much fun. I did um, not even notice that the multiplayer was gone. Wow, that's yeah, the the, uh, the the remaster has no multiplayer from any of them. Wow, I, I including uh. I literally just opened it, and I cannot believe I've completely forgot <laughs> that it didn't have the multiplayer. That sucks. So I feel like um, most of this episode is going to be about uh, Minerva's Den. I, I want to talk so about go... Minerva's Den the most, yes, but we should actually brush on yeah. Delta. And... Let's go ahead and talk about the main story. Basically, if you played Bioshock 1, you played Bioshock 2. Damn. Um, uh, there's a, there's a, a lot of similarities in the, the basic story. Uh, the differences were pretty fun. It was worth playing as a game, but uh, nothing really stood out for me. So the reason that Bioshock 2 stood out for me with all the hype and everything absolutely had to be all of the the build-up stuff for bioshock 2 and i'm not talking about like trailers and stuff i am talking about the pretty much like puzzle game style website that um they had developed for um pretty much it, it told the story and here I, I have it pulled up so I don't get anybody's name wrong. Um, I, I forgot his name. That I I vaguely remember that I went onto that website and did all the puzzles. Uh, that was really cool promotional material. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. I don't. I don't remember. Uh, Mark Meltzer. About it. Mark Meltzer. That's his name. Um, didn't they do one for infinite too? Now that I'm thinking about it. I, like had I don't know because I kind of gave up, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, something really neat. And, um, with that, with all these puzzles and everything, um, the quick brief history with that 
is Mark Meltzer had a daughter, um, Cindy, right? I'm pretty sure. Sure. I, I think that was her name. I, I'm going to feel bad if I got her name wrong. Uh, oh, it's fine. The internet will only rip you to shreds. Yeah, which they already rip you to shreds anyways. Um, essentially, her daughter... Oh, here it is. Um, Cindy. Yeah, her daughter is Cindy, and they lived in New York. Uh, essentially, Cindy is kidnapped um, for, by a big sister uh, in Bioshock around happening around the Bioshock 2 time. Um, and his all these puzzle boxes and all this stuff that you had to do prior to the game, and you don't have to do it before the game. This was like pre-release stuff that was little Easter eggs for everybody. Uh, it was all pretty much leading up to you finding Rapture, essentially. And once you found it, you, as you see in Bioshock 2, they actually put Mark Meltzer into the game, not as a physical character, but um, uh, as audio diaries. Like, you found audio diaries from him, and he's like, hey, I made it down here, and I'm trying to find Cindy. And then um, you you actually do, and it's kind of sad, but uh, you actually do end up killing Mark Meltzer if you kill the big daddies towards the end. You when you kill one of them and it's it's in the um, Persephone area where like they show where the big daddies were being made, essentially, and they were trying to imprint the little sisters onto the big daddies. Um, you kill one of them and when you walk up to it, it says instead of it saying like, you know, um this series big daddy it says mark Meltzer, and you're like oh no this is him and then you there's an audio diary in it and it's pretty much uh sophia lamb's like hey if you want to be with your daughter let me make you into a big daddy and there you go so you you end up finding out that if you were one of the people that did all of these puzzle boxes and everything there is a closure for you like they actually closed that story which i appreciated which was very neat. I'll give I'll give Bioshock two that much. Uh, that's about as much as I'll give it in terms of uh, story connection. Because it was just so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. Goodness, all, all the attack. I'm trying to find. Well, I'm trying to find the because they're they did a actual like 2K they did a actual event like on the coast where they had like all these bottles that were like from Rapture and it was really cool. I, I was yeah, I remember I remember that. But uh, enough about the pre stuff. Let's talk about the actual game because I'm saying some of this stuff and it's like I go hey. <laughs> Um, the pre stuff was cool. Um, I, you know, I, I've, I've talked enough about how much I don't like the game. We'll go ahead and talk about what you like about the game. What I liked about it was they did a really good job. Cause what I didn't feel got portrayed well enough in the first game was actually the life that a lot of the splicers, lived when they were people and yes in bioshock infinite when we get to that one we will actually see how it's like um how, you actually get to walk around like back when rapture was rapture but in bioshock 2 a lot of stuff gets explained as far as um like you got sophia lamb and she was a psychiatrist that they brought down there and a lot of different stuff, especially with the downloadable content with Minerva's Den, which I, I'll get to that, but it explains how just a lot of the systems worked in Rapture with, and you, you got to think Rapture in itself. Um, I'm pretty sure it was designed in the, cause you got to think, yes, it was here. It is. Um, 
It was established in 1946. It was finished in 1951. So all of these designs for this city were at least prior to that because they had to design everything prior to them actually going down and building it. So, cause you, the thing you got to think about is with normal, um, with normal building, you can kind of do stuff along the way. Yes. You have your blueprints and everything like that, but Oh, Hey, we got to change this. Hey, we got to change this. Like, that's okay. Going down to that depth. And I know, I know it's, it's a video game. I know it's, you know, on the border of science fiction. But if you think about it, the designs for Rapture itself, like for them saying like, hey, this building's got to be built like this or hey, this building's got to be built like this. Like this is this is at least starting in the end of 1930s. So you got to think of the technology at that time. And then you look at Bioshock 1, which, yes, it, it takes place later, but it's still not later enough to where it would be to the point where you'd be like, oh, yeah, they have computers. Oh, yeah, they have this. Bioshock definitely puts a lot of that in there to be like, oh, hey, this is how they had this, or hey, this is how they had this, like that kind of stuff. That is that is something I didn't really consider uh, too much, was the, the whole world-building aspect, uh, all, the, all the details that Bioshock 2 brought uh, into the fray. But but I, I don't think it's really worth mentioning too much about the plot. If you're interested, you should go play the, you should buy the remastered version, go play the game. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's just do it. The, what, but what we will talk about, oh, go ahead. The one thing that I didn't like, and I, I definitely will voice this because I, I voiced this particular part in our last, um, in our last cast, um, about how I like games that like they know they were going to have a sequel. The thing that I didn't like in this one was that they changed some of the established stuff to work Sophia Lamb into it. And the thing that I'm specifically talking about is a poster. And uh, I don't know if you can throw this up in the in the uh, video, but uh, I'll try to get it to you. But it's a poster, and it says uh, Rapture's... I, th- I think it says, like, Rapture's Greatest Minds or something. And in the Bioshock 1, it had just your, you know, all your main people that you think of. It had Ryan, it had Fontaine, it had uh, Suchon, uh, Tenenbaum. It had your basic characters. In the second game the reason they have the same poster all over the place except for uh they added sophia lamb into it and they just like put her somewhere random and i don't know why that little tidbit like kind of bugs me a little bit but i i just feel like that's them trying to force a character um, onto our I like our already preset canon that is Rapture, and they're just like trying to be like, hey, this character exists. I would have been okay with them because we already know from playing the game that Ryan never liked Sophia Lamb, even when she was brought down to the city of Rapture to, you know, do psychiatry work he did not like her. Even the, one of the first audio diaries that you find um, searching around in one of the train stations, it's pretty much him saying how he does not like psychiatry, but his people, like his citizens are asking for it for one. So he's going to bring one down just to satisfy, you know, pretty much just to shut him up. So it's safe to assume that if they were to not put her in like those posters or not like do certain things like that, we would have not been that upset because we would have been like, Oh, Hey, Ryan obviously really didn't like her. So that's why she never got put in these posters, like that sort of thing. And she was just a psychiatrist. Like all of the people that were in that poster. And if he hasn't pulled up in this, um, you see like they, 
like Suchan, the guy who pretty much is developing like all of these plasmids that the whole Rapture is using. Uh, Ryan, the you know the maker of the city, uh, Frank Fontaine, another big businessman. Like, like these are just like really, really big people for Rapture. But Sophia Lamb, she kind of technically just starts off as a psychiatrist. Like, I'm not saying that psychiatrists aren't important. I'm just saying that comparing them to what Ryan was, what Fontaine was, and any of that, just by putting her in these posters, it doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. I just feel like it's forcing the character. D did you just talk yourself out of your your major complaint over the game? Mm, no. I think I talked myself I thought, more into it. <laughs> I thought your major complaint was that she wasn't in the posters. No, that she is and in then, the posters. Sorry. I probably I probably uh, went over okay. myself. Um I know I don't I'm not even entirely sure what poster you're referring to. I, I'm pulling it up right if now. If you give me the link, I'll go ahead. Uh, it'll be put up. Okay. But, um, I uh, I don't think I ever noticed it. <laughs> uh, so, so I will say on to that point, the first Bioshock wrapped up the Bioshock story in as nice of a bow as it needed to be. There it is. There was no need for a sequel, but they ended up just, you know, getting one, which also isn't a problem. Uh, it just, you know, whenever you force a sequel, it's a forced sequel. And that's that's another thing that bugged me. I, I felt like that's a little bit what this one was. I feel like Levin actually had this idea in his mind, but it it definitely was not nothing compared to the Would You Kindly storyline or the, the mind blow that... Um, Bioshock Infinite is. I can't. We're probably gonna have to do a thirty-minute video on that thing. Yeah, we may. We may have to do. <laughs> we may have to do a Bioshock Infinite video, depending on how much we want to talk about Infinite itself, and then do one on the DLC. That's fine. Yeah, because uh, they're. Don't, I don't know if there's going to be a point in spending too much time talking about Infinite. Uh, it's a really good game and all. But it was really the ending that made it such a big deal. It's definitely so the ending that, that I wanted. I, oh, yeah. I, well, I, I just it was sent not that, the ending uh, I was expecting. I just sent that poster to you so you can comment on it. Um, so while, while we still have time in this one, I want to try to spend our last um, five minutes on um, Minerva's Den because I, it was so well put together. It was such a, I personally wish it would have been the other way around. I wish Minerva's Den would have been Bioshock 2. And I wish that the Bioshock 2 storyline could have been like a little side one that had to do with like, like maybe Sophia Lamb was just like this, you know, smaller psychiatrist that just kind of went insane under splicing and she had all these followers. And then Minerva's Den was like, you know, the actual full game, which I think that would have been nice. I could not agree with you more. <laughs> uh, Minerva's Den was leaps and bounds for a DLC. Because it, it actually gave you that. I definitely didn't expect it. And, you know, spoiler alert, but pretty much this whole cast has been spoiler alert. I did not expect that to be, um, what's his name the entire time? I did not expect Sigma to be, um, what was his name? We go into this cast with a lot of preparation, guys. Well, it, we know exactly what we want to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Um... I, I don't remember his name either. I'm, I, I have the wiki up right now. Uh, what, what, uh, what else did you enjoy about Minerva's Den while, while you're looking that up? Uh, Porter. Mil Milton Porter. So 
Milton Porter was absolutely my favorite part of Minerva's Den. And I know, you know, all of you that actually know the story and everything, you're going to know what I'm talking about with this is this whole time that you are playing Minerva's Den, you think that you are talking to this guy. You think, oh, hey, this guy is just randomly helping a big daddy. Um, like, oh, hey, you help me. I'll help you get out of Rapture. And then at the end, you find out, huh, I'm this guy. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I definitely never saw it coming. I never saw that coming. I was shocked. I was waiting for him to die or something. You know, like normal video game stuff. Like, oh, this person that's been helping me this whole time randomly gets killed. Like, I was waiting for that. That didn't happen. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't these the same people who made uh, System Shock? Um... What do you mean? Like the people that made Minerva's Den? Who made Bioshock in general? Oh, um, no, actually. Um, kind of. It's, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I don't really know that straight off the bat. I know that well, it's I based remember... off System Shock and I have System Shock. I can't get it to work, but I have System Shock. I remember people saying that uh, the Bioshock series is a spiritual successor to the System Shock series. And knowing System Shock itself, uh, th this will be a spoiler for those of you who haven't played System Shock, but the main enemy in the first one is the person who was helping you the whole time. Oh, all right. So, so like, um, whenever, let me whenever hit you real I quick. Realized uh, Irrational Games, yes, they made Bioshock and System Shock 2. Irrational Games right, did. So, so that's close enough related that, like, uh, that, I guess that's why I was a little bit less surprised <laughs> <laughs> by the by that by that ending twist. It was still a shock because it's like, why would you expect that? But it's like after after the shock settles, you're like, oh. That that makes sense. Actually, they're just uh, further honoring their previous uh, games. I agree. Um, are there any other questions that you would like to ask me about my ideas of Minerva's Den? Uh, nothing. Nothing I can particular. What was your favorite DLC equipment? Do you Ooh. remember them? Yes. Oh, wait. Equipment? Well, nothing. Yeah, well, like enemy. Well, <laughs> weapons or plasmids, whatever. Nothing beats Gravity Well. Oh, my gosh. Gravity Well absolutely laid it down for me. Like the whole thing. I loved Gravity Well. Um, for people who don't know, Gravity Well was a plasmid that you charged up. And it, it was this little black ball that showed up in your hand. And you threw it. And... Any uh, splicers or any enemies, as long as they were small enough that were near it, pretty much got sucked into this little thing at like it was a black hole. And they just like spun around in a giant glitchy mess. And then it just exploded. It was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure everybody loved Gravity Well. <laughs> Ah, oh, that was, it was such a, a fun plasmid. And then the the laser the laser rifle was very very well put. It wasn't overpowered, and the the additional, um, it, despite defying the laws of you know thermodynamics, uh, or I think I said that right. Um, the laser rifle definitely like took the cake as far as the weapons go for Bioshock. It it just, it was amazing. <laughs> is there, is there anything else you'd like to talk about with this Bioshock two cast? Nope. I'm definitely ready for our, um, Bioshock infinite one though. I am prepared. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. Uh, that's going to be, that's going to be a doozy <laughs> for those of you following along. 
and we're going to go ahead and end this. Don't play Bioshock 2. Goodness, no. Play it, but then have constructive criticism about it. <laughs> and then become angry and bitter and never play it again. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, y'all. Bye.